This is a video on graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Um, first off, let's make sure we understand what a linear inequality is. So just a quick definition here. Uh, a linear inequality occurs when the equal sign in a linear equation is replaced with an inequality symbol. When I say an inequality symbol um, keep in mind, I mean like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So, just some written examples of this. You know, if I had something like y is less than 3x minus 4. Right, I'm saying linear inequality in two variables, so we have x and y in this. And, you know, normally you might see this in like a y equals mx plus b type form, where this inequality symbol is really an equal sign. But here, you know, I have it as a less than. Um, you know, it could be something like y is greater than equal to one-fifth x plus seven, right? That also would fit the requirements. It might not even be in y equals mx plus b form. It could be something like, you know, five x plus two y is greater than or equal to nine, right? Again, it's a linear inequality in two variables, you have x and y. It's just not in the, you know, uh, y equals mx plus b form, right? You have the standard form here. Um, but really, you know, it's just identifying them as, you know, these would be linear equations, except for they have inequality symbols in here. So this is how we handle them. So these are your steps to solve. All right, so for linear inequality, the first thing you want to do, all right, so step one is really solve for y on one side of the inequality. Then graph the corresponding line. When I say to graph the corresponding line, you know, you should get something that's got a y equals an x plus b type form. So you would use the slope and the y-intercept to graph the line. The key is, is that you want to use kind of a dashed line for a strict inequality. So if you have a greater than or less than, we're using a dashed line because you're actually not equal to what's happening on the line. But you'll use a solid line for greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because then the line can be included in your answer. In other words, that equal sign tells you the line is part of your solution. Second thing you want to do is test points to the left or right. of the line to see if the inequality holds true. Now, when I say that, really you can pick any point that's not on the line. So you want to pick an ordered pair that's not on your line, and you want to test it in the inequality to see if you get something that's true or false. And then based on what happens there, is how you handle step three. Step three says you want to shade on the side of the line where the solution holds true. In other words, you're testing that point in step two to find out where it's true or, or false. 
you want to shade on the side of the line where the solution is true because that's telling you it satisfies the original equation. So we're shading the area of the graph that has all the ordered pairs that would satisfy our original inequality. Um, and that's important to know. Uh, sometimes people shade these and they don't understand why. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. So for this example, if I said graph the solution. Four and we say we have two y is less than three x plus two. So the first thing to note is that you know we have something that's a linear inequality in two variables, right? We have y and x in there. If there was only one variable, like we had, you know, in previous sections, where we just would have x in there, um, you'd be graphing these on a number line in one dimension just for x. And here, because we have two variables, we know we're going to be graphing them on a uh, coordinate, you know, x-y axis system. So here to solve for y, right? We want to isolate y on one side. We said, you know, in this case we'll divide by 2. Remember, you're dividing by 2 to every single term to get y by itself here. Cancel the 2s, you get y is less than 3 over 2. That doesn't reduce, so it is 3 over 2. The x, typically write right next to it. You could write it in the numerator, but it is not in the denominator. And then plus 2 over 2, if this simplifies, which it does, you get 1. And now we said we wanted to graph the corresponding lines. You want to talk about what you know from this form, right? This is like the y equals mx plus b form, except for now we have an inequality symbol. But the pieces still hold. What's the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is, you know, your constant term, the b in terms of the y equals mx plus b form. So it's going to be 0, comma, whatever that value is, in this case, 1. And remember, you plot that first. So we'll plot 0, 1. Y-intercept means on the y-axis. And then you want to use your slope to move around to the next point from there. So the slope is whatever's in front of x. So that's m, which is 3 halves. And remember what it tells you to do. It tells you to move... The top number, right, the numerator, tells you about the change in y. So it's talking about moving up or down. Since it's positive, we're going to move up. Three, the bottom number, the denominator, tells you about moving left or right. Since it's positive, we're going to move right two. So from this point, they already plotted, right, the y-intercept. I'm going to go up one, two, three units, and to the right, two units. And if you want to, to be more accurate, you could do it again. Go up one, two, three, to the right, two you have your next point. Now remember the steps in my process. I said when you draw this line, right, I said use a solid line if you were using, let's go back a second, right, I said we'll use a solid line if we have an equal to in our inequality, but we'll dash line if we don't have an equal to. So in this case, right, we just have a greater than or less than, and you put dash line. So in the graph we're looking at, we just have a strict inequality that's less than, so we're going to use a dashed line, and that's you know, make sure it's obviously a dashed line. The next thing I mentioned was that we wanted to test a point that's not on the line. So, I'm going to test a point that's not on the line. Typically, it's easiest to test 0, 0, the origin, if it's not on the line. If it is on the line, you can't use it. But uh, I'm going to test the point 0, 0. So I'm going to use 0, 0. And I'm going to test this in the original inequality which was 2y is less than 3x plus 2, and I'm just substituting it in to see if it comes out true or false. So I have 2 times y, which is 0, is less than 3 times x, which is 0, plus 2. 2 times 0 is 0, is less than 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 2. So I get 0 is less than 2. And I have to ask myself, is that true or false? Well, in this case, this 0 is less than 2. It's true, so it checks out. So I want to shade on the side of the line uh, that has zero, 0, on it. So zero, 0, is on the right side of the line, right? There's zero, 0, my origin. I'm going to shade this entire side of the line. That's telling me where my solution occurs on that side of the line. And that's actually your answer, right? So because this came out true, right, this means shade towards the zero, 0, side. And then this is the solution. This represents all the ordered pairs that satisfy the original inequality. Let's take a look at another one here. So 
So if I said to graph the solution for 4x minus 2y is less than or equal to 8. Remember the first thing I want to try to do is get this into the y equals mx plus b type form, uh, which really means that I want to get my axis to the other side so I can isolate the y term. So I'm going to subtract 4x, subtract 4x, and I've got negative 2y is less than or equal to, remember this negative stays with the 4x, these aren't like terms, so that's a positive 8, so we write plus 8. Uh, make sure you keep the sign with the term, right? The 8's positive, so it's plus. The ne negative 4x is a negative 4x there. And then solving for y, you want to divide both sides of this by negative 2. Remember, you're doing this to every single term. Keep things balanced. These cancel out, so you end up with y. Note here, we divided by a negative. So if I divide by a negative, this inequality symbol should be facing the other way. I mean, it gets switched, right, to greater than or equal to. This is a rule we have about inequalities. If you divide them by a negative, you have to change direction of the inequality symbol. And then we evaluate the rest. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2. x stays x. A positive 8 divided by a negative 2 makes this minus 4. So now we have the form we need. And then we want to plot the corresponding line, just like we did previously. So what's the y-intercept here? Well, that's always 0, comma, whatever b is, in this case, negative 4. So we plot 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 4 would be there. And then you want to ask yourself, what's the slope? Well, the slope, right, it's whatever's in front of x, which is 2. And we use it as a fraction to move around our graph. So remember, if it's a whole number, you can write it over 1. So we have 2 over 1. And remember, this gives you directions on how to move around. It tells you to move the numerator. Right, tells you to move up or down, in this case, up 2 because it's positive. The denominator, it's a positive 1, tells you to move right 1. And from this point, we're going to do that. We're going to move up 1, 2, the right 1. Remember, you're always moving from the point you already plotted for the y-intercept. And then once you go up 2 and over 1, you could do it a few times to be more accurate. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and so on. Uh, the inequality in this case has an equal to in there, so it means you can include the line in your solution. So we'll draw this in here as best we can. Solid line, arrows on the end. You know, if there was no equal to sign, then this would be a dashed line. And now again, you want to test a point. Alright, so the test point... I like to use the origin, 0, 0. You could use any point you want, though, um, as long as it's not on the line. So I'll pick 0, 0. And we're testing it in the 4x minus 2y, the original equation. 4x minus 2y is less than or equal to 8. You could test it here, um, but if you made an error, you might not show up. So we'll test it in the original. Remember how we're substituting in. This is x, this is y, so it's 4 times 0. Minus 2 times 0, is that less than or equal to 8? Well, 4 times 0 is 0, minus 2 times 0, that's 0. So this whole side 0, 0 is less than or equal to 8. And then we say, is that true or false? Well, is 0 less than or equal to 8? Yeah, it meets the less than part of it, so it's true. So this means you want to shade toward 0, 0. If it came out false, you'd shade away from 0, 0. So... You want to shade on the side of the line that has 0, 0. So here's 0, 0. Because it came out true, I'm shading this side of the line. And that would be our solution. What that tells you is all the ordered pairs on this side of the line, and including the line, that's why it's a solid line, um, will satisfy this original inequality of 4x minus 2y is less than or equal to 8. Let's take a look at another one. All right, so if I said to graph negative 3y plus 4x is greater than 6, Again, we want to get y by itself on one side, so I'll subtract 4x from each side. So I end up with negative 3y is greater than, and then 
negative 4x plus 6. Make sure you keep the correct sign with the term, right? Uh, and then we divide both sides of this by negative 3. You remember, you're doing it to every single term. So dividing by negative 3 on each side, this side gives me y. Because I divided by a negative, this tells me to switch the direction of that inequality symbol to be a less than. A negative over a negative here makes us a positive. 4 divided by 3, you know, doesn't divide out evenly, doesn't reduce, keep it as 4 thirds. It's a positive 4 thirds, x right next to it, or in the numerator, not in the denominator. Positive 6 divided by negative 3 is minus 2. And now we're ready to graph the corresponding line. So if I look at this, the y-intercept, remember, is always 0, comma, whatever the constant term is, whatever b is, so it's 0, comma, negative 2. I'm going to plot that first. All right, the slope, m, all right, in this case, is whatever's in front of x. We have 4 thirds. If I have 4 thirds as my slope, remember the numerator tells you about moving up or down. In this case, the change in y going up 4. The denominator tells you about moving left or right. Since it's positive, we're moving to the right 3. So from this point that we already plotted, the 0, negative 2, the y-intercept, you're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 1, 2, 3. Plot your next point. You could do it again just to be more accurate. 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 1, 2, 3. And then you have to look, do I need a solid or a dashed line? Well, there's no equal to on this. So that tells me that I'm going to need a dashed line, meaning you're not including the line actually in your solution, right? The points on the line are not included in the solution. So using a dashed line, because there's no equal to there, and then you want to put, uh, you want to use a test value, All right? So we're going to test point. The test point I'll use, typically I use 0, 0 because it's not on the line in this case. Um, it's easiest one to substitute in, but if 0, 0 was on the line, any other point on this graph that's not on the line, you could substitute in to see if it's true. And I'm going to test this in the original problem, which was the negative 3y plus 4x is greater than 6. And remember, we're substituting in, right? So this is x, this is y. So this would be negative 3 times y is 0 plus 4 times 0. We're checking, is that greater than 6? Well, negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4 times 0, that's 0, so this whole side is 0. Is 0 greater than 6? No, right? So this is false. Since this is false, you want to shade opposite from where your test point is. So shade opposite from 0, 0. So when I'm looking at this up here, where am I going to shade this? Well, 0, 0 is on the left side here, so I'm going to shade this side here because the 0, 0 side came out false, so the other side would be true. And let's take a look at a couple special cases here. If I said to graph y is greater than 2, right, in two variables, um, you really want to graph the corresponding line. The corresponding line to y is greater than 2, if you remember, would be the line y equals 2. When you have y equals a number, remember that's, you know, a constant. It's really telling you that no matter what x is, y is always 2. And if you remember graphing this from uh, when we graph linear equations, right, if I say just y equals 2, that line will be a horizontal line through 2 on the y-axis. Um, so because my original inequality didn't have an equal sign, I know the line's going to be dashed, and I know it has to go through 2. So it's really just a dashed line here, right, going through. y equals 2. And then I have to test the point to shade. Now, if you think about how you would shade this, uh, you know, I want the y values greater than 2. You really don't have to test a point because there's only one variable. It's kind of easy to see. Well, where are y is greater than 2? Are they above this line or below this line? Well, the y values that are larger than 2 are above the line, and that would be your solution. There's really not a lot of work to show. Um, it's really having an understanding of what you're finding. If this had been greater than or equal to 2, that would be a solid line on 2. Um, we'll look at one more similar but different. 
uh, if I said to graph x is less than or equal to negative 3. Well, on two variables, you know, if I only had an x and there's no y, you know, you really should graph the corresponding line of x equals negative 3. And when I had x equals a value, that meant, didn't matter what y was, x was always negative 3. So if that's the case, that really is telling me that, you know, I have a vertical line, right, through negative 3 on the x-axis. And, you know, you can just draw that right away. x is always negative 3, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We're really drawing this line here. It's going to be a solid line because our original inequality had an equal in there. So it means the line's included. So you have a solid line, you know, at x equals negative 3. And now where do I want to shade this? Well, I want to shade this, you know, where x's are less than or equal to negative 3. Now you could test a point like we did in the past. You know, the, the y value just wouldn't matter. But you can kind of look at where this line is. It splits it up from left to right here. Where are the x's less than or equal to negative 3? Well, where is it less than negative 3? Smaller x values would be to the left. So you just shade this side. So when you only have one variable in these, uh, in these, it's easier to graph them um, as long as you remember what the lines look like in terms of a, a vertical or a horizontal line. Um, so hopefully this video helps.